Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher may have come from humble beginnings. Kunis immigrated from a small Ukrainian town as a child, and Kutcher worked as everything from a dishwasher to a cereal factory assistant in college. But the life they've built together is extremely lavish. Not many couples can say that they actually built their own dream house. But when it came to where they would raise their family, Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher spared no expense in creating a home together. This passion project began while Kunis was pregnant with their first child and took five years to complete. To create their dream abode, which is so lavish they even named it Cuckoo Farms, Kutcher and Kunis hired famed architect Howard Backen, who said that the duo weighed in on everything from being beam sizes to concrete. The environmentally conscious couple also kept sustainability in mind when designing the Kutcher Kunis Palace. Back and shared with Architectural Digest, Ashton and Mila are concerned about the quality of the soil, the purity of the food they eat, and the water they drink. The ideals of sustainability and regenerative farming aren't just abstract concepts to them. Amenities include an entertainment barn and barbecue pavilion, a set of silver throne chairs that Kutcher had custom-made in India, and a 10-foot crystal chandelier. And the sprawling property is so large that the couple even dug a well on it to irrigate the land, and harvested an entire cornfield during the COVID-19 pandemic. When the Kutcher Kunis family needs an escape from their Beverly Hills mansion, they can relax literally steps from the beach in their $10 million second home in Santa Barbara. The property boasts six bedrooms and six bathrooms, not to mention an ocean view balcony and outdoor hot tub. But how is the couple able to afford not one, but two extravagant homes? Believe it or not, Ashton Kutcher hadn't always intended to be an actor. He first studied biomedical engineering at the University of Iowa, but a win in a Fresh Faces of Iowa contest prompted him to drop out and pursue modeling. Eventually, Kutcher's skills in front of a camera helped him land his first acting job as one of the leads on the long-running sitcom That 70s Show. He also quickly found success in movies, with roles in Dude, Where's My Car? and Just Married. Finally, he took a more active producing role as the creator and host of MTV's prank show, Punked. When asked about his career trajectory, he told Newsweek, I pursued something I was passionate about, and for 22 years, I haven't felt like I've worked a day. With a net worth of $200 million, Kutcher's made a bankable career for himself. In 2012, Forbes ranked him the highest paid actor on TV for Two and a Half Men, where it's estimated he earned $24 million a season. Kunis's career began in the same place as Kutcher's. She first found mainstream success as Jackie on That 70s Show. This is our secret makeout place. I did not swipe the key from my mother's real estate office so that you could have a party. I know, it's like a bonus. <laughs> Long before the stars embarked on real-life romance, they were acting it out on the show. In fact, according to Insider, Kunis's very first kiss was with Kutcher, when her character Jackie was dating his character, Kelso. In 2001, Kunis spilled the beans about her experience to people. I was like, oh, he's so cute, it's the Calvin Klein model. Then I was like, I have to kiss him? I was so nervous and uncomfortable, I had the biggest crush on him. However, the actor's real-life age difference ensured that things stayed platonic. At the time of the kiss, Kunis was 14, and Kutcher was 19. When the pair reconnected years later at the 2012 Golden Globes, their 70s days were far behind them. Nowadays, Kunis is equally well-known for box office hits like Forgetting Sarah Marshall and Black Swan. She also voices the character of Meg on Family Guy, which earns her around $200,000 per episode. In total, the actress is reportedly worth $75 million. Ashton Kutcher isn't only known for his acting chops, he also has a reputation as a smart investor. In 2010, he invested $1 million in A-grade investments, the company he formed with business partners Guy Osiri and Ron Burkle. The actor told Insider, I was pitched Uber before Uber ever raised a single dollar. 
Together, he and Osiri invested $500,000 in the company, for a stake that is now worth 100 times what they paid. Kutcher has also turned profits with investments in Skype, Spotify, and Airbnb. As for her role in the money-making, Mila Kunis has admitted that she actually tried to stop Kutcher from investing in then-unknown companies. So he's like, there's this company, it's kind of like a cab company, but anybody can drive the cab. I was like, that's the worst idea ever. She added that she also tried to talk him out of investing in Bitcoin, calling it a, quote, horrible idea. Besides their savvy investments, Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis also make some serious cash by serving as ambassadors for well-known brands. In 2013, Kutcher took on the role of product engineer for the tech giant Lenovo, earning him $10 million. His famous face has also been used in commercials for companies like Nikon. Kunis, too, has nabbed some notable endorsement deals. In 2013, she became the face of Gemfields, a gemstone producer, even traveling to Zambia to visit the company's mine. The actress is also a global spokesperson for bourbon company Jim Beam. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the couple joined forces to create Quarantine Wine, a Pinot Noir whose proceeds went to charities. Kunis joked about it during an appearance on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. And so, in a weird way, I just combined both my favorite things, drinking and donating. In 2021, Cheetos even tapped the couple to do a Super Bowl commercial alongside Shaggy. When it comes to living it up, nothing says lavish like rubbing elbows with fellow celebrities. Kutcher and Kunis don't have to go far to socialize. Their close pal Jennifer Lawrence lives two doors down from them. In an interview with Vogue, Lawrence said, They're awesome. I go over there uninvited. They're probably getting pretty sick of me. Another one of Kunis's dear friends is Zoe Saldana. The two are so tight that when Saldana received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, Kunis delivered a speech at the ceremony. This girl is my ride or die. My friend, my partner in crime. Don't cry! Kutcher, meanwhile, counts Dax Shepard as a close companion. The two bonded when they worked on punk together, and reconnected years later when they joined their wives, Mila Kunis and Kristen Bell, on The Ellen DeGeneres Show to promote the movie Bad Moms. When they're not hanging out with other stars, Kutcher and Kunis are raiding their address books finding celebrity trainers and stylists to keep them looking their best. For his role in The Guardian, in which he played a member of the Coast Guard, Kutcher looked to another athletic actor for guidance. He told the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, I went and saw Troy with my wife and a friend of hers, and every time Brad Pitt came on the screen, there was an audible sigh. So I went out and hired Brad Pitt's trainer, which was great. He was a Navy SEAL who played one of the extras in G.I. Jane. Kunis, meanwhile, took a cue from Gerard Butler, hiring the man known for getting him camera-ready for 300. Trainer Brian Abercrombie helped her shape up for the rom-com Friends with Benefits. Abercrombie told Shape, There was a joke in the script about her having no butt. I was determined to make them rewrite it. To show off their toned physiques, the couple calls upon stylists to the stars. Kutcher works with Samantha McMillan, whose clients include Charlie Heaton, Chris Hemsworth, and Brie Larson. As for Kunis, her ensembles are coordinated with the help of Petra Flannery, known for dressing Emma Stone, Amelia Clark, and Charles Melton. When you're as famous as Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis, you don't feel the need to attend every Hollywood event you're invited to. In fact, Kunis and Kutcher are extremely selective about the red carpets they walk together. In 2017, they skipped the Oscars red carpet, but did make sure to attend the Oscars of Science, otherwise known as the Breakthrough Prize Ceremony. At the ceremony, which honors the outstanding work of scientists, the power couple presented an award, surrounded by stars like Kerry Washington, Morgan Freeman, and Wiz Khalifa. What made the ceremony particularly notable is that it marked the first time the couple had walked a red carpet together in over 16 years. Technically, according to USA Today, it was also their red carpet debut as a couple. Their previous red carpet appearance together was back in 2000, when they attended a premiere as nothing more than that 70s show co-stars. The pair selected outfits befitting such a momentous occasion. Kutcher looked sharp in a classic black tuxedo, while Kunis paired an edgy, sheer black corset top with a Dolce & Gabbana floral skirt. When Kunis and Kutcher do make an appearance out on the town, they do it in style. 
In 2019, according to People, they were conspicuously absent from the Academy Awards, apparently having decided to skip the biggest night in Hollywood. They did make an appearance at an after-party, though not the Vanity Fair event most stars attended. Instead, they attended a far more exclusive and secret soiree hosted by Madonna and Guy Siri, and attended by VIPs like Lady Gaga. It's actually called The Party, according to Time, and guests are forbidden to share photos on social media once inside. Lucky for us, Kutcher made sure to take a sleek selfie at some point during the evening, so we know the stars showed up looking their best. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite celebrities are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.